Right, I'm going to wrap up this at a crazy pace because I've only got seven minutes. Um, I just thought, right, I'm just going to have to holler doing our main dude. Um, I want to rattle through what I think we might do, how we might get there, what we might um, do to get us out of Britain as fast as we can and do it in a way that creates the best country we can on the way in. So, <laughs> let, me, let me just put it like this as fast as I can. I want to start with three caveats. Um, some of what I say today is already been approved by the Commonweal Board. Go and have a look online. We have an amazing board, about 16 um, strongest people and most inspiring people that came out of this campaign. We asked them if they come on our board and they all said yes. So we've got plans and, and I'll talk about some of those, I'll, I'll touch on some of those. Some of this is my personal opinion um, and things are moving very fast and that's the second caveat. This is only 10 days out. Uh, in strategy terms and planning what next terms, this is a blink of the eye. We have to see how things change, we have to see how things settle down, we have to be clever. So we won this. This is a long game. Some of it's short, some of it's medium and some of it's long and we have to prepare for all of these and do it right. So with that said, let me start and say what I think we can do stage by stage. One, we need to clean out as many of the unionist parties, and in particular the Scottish Labour Party, in the 2015. <laughs> I do not dislike or hate the members of the Labour Party, but I hate what that party has become. It is a function of the British establishment, and in my opinion, it has now got to a point where it is the biggest barrier to social change in Scotland. <laughs> I believe the best way to do that is to try to pull together for 2015 an electoral alliance. There are still some parts of Scotland where the SNP cannot reach, particularly some of the urban areas. A lot of people talk about um, Glasgow, but this is also true of five parts of Lanarkshire and others. I would propose that first of all we try to create a really strong manifesto for 2015. That manifesto would, and incidentally I'm going to keep, keep coming back to this point, we cannot revert to being protest and against. The strength of yes was that we were creating something positive and new. So I don't want to Seven minutes, folks, stop clapping! <laughs> Um, so it's not just anti-austerity, I would like to see us put together a fast policy paper which calls for a one-off wealth tax for people which would largely hit London, which would eradicate all or most of the debt and would make no need for austerity to be there in the first place. If we could create that manifesto and we could create an electoral alliance, perhaps we stand as, I don't know, People Scotland, and it would say People Scotland and in a name brackets SNP and a name bracket Scottish Greens. And what we do is we go constituency by constituency across this country, find out who can beat the union and stand that person. And if there isn't a party person, if there isn't a party person that can do it, we find an independent that can do it. And we stand an independent in that, that can in that seat on the same platform, whoever can win. And we pitch that fight as the chance for Scotland to hold Britain to account. Which is to say, it is likely that it will be either a tiny minority uh, government or a, a, sorry, a tiny majority government but more likely to be a minority. It is realistic that we could say in 30 or 40 anti-austerity, pro um, end of the debt, politicians to London that would form the balance of power. And that, you, that pitch to the people of Scotland would be an amazingly strong pitch. I wouldn't want to be Labour standing against that when they're standing as pro-austerity. <laughs> and just for a bit of fun, once we get there, we're actually running the show, we'll turn and say, hey, all you celebs in London, this is what union looks like. We're running the show now. But that's just for fun. Okay. <laughs> So we do that, we get that in, and we start working now, and this is this Commonweal. I spent most of the campaign not promoting Commonweal because I never wanted to use this independence campaign as a recruiting tool for anything, or bluntly to sully it by using it to gather money. But we need money now. Someone is going to have to set a policy agenda. I want to see an end to as many of these things as we can, but we do not currently have a straightforward method of ending the sorts of problems with sanctions that you're talking about. We are facing cuts, our budget is being cut. We'll look at packages that can do things about this. A national land value tax and a number of other things can take the pain out of this, but we've got to be realistic. We cannot go out there and say that we in Scotland with devolved powers can end the pain of sanctions because we can't. So we've got to do a couple of things. We will work hard to work good. We will work hard to get to by spring, create as positive a manifesto for devolution as we can, which will do as many of the good things. I, I've written a little bit about them, I can't talk about them just now, um, but there are amazing things that we could do. For example, a major banking system. We could change the banking system. Every local authority in Scotland could set up a, a mutual bank which isn't screwing over its customers. We could do things with energy. 
and we can certainly do things to budget and make the worst of the pain out of the cuts. We will work very hard to create as powerful and serious a uh, manifesto as we can for the spring of next year. And what we will do is encourage, as far as we can, those floods of you who have joined the political parties to tell those political parties that that's what you want. Remember, the SNP is a democratic party. If enough of you say this manifesto is what we want, you can vote it at conference, and that's SNP policy. Use your strength to change the parties. This is not, and I can promise you, because I talk to a lot of people in the SNP, this is not something which would be unwelcome by many, many people in the SNP. The idea that the SNP was full of right wingers beforehand is not true. Most of them were, the members of the SNP were good social democrats like the rest of you. And then what we do is we get into a position where we run the same strategy in 2016. Seat by seat on the constituency, find the candidate that can win and do it again. And then split on the list because that's our strength. On the list, we can all compete against each other and maximise our vote. So clean them out in the constituency, maximise our vote in the list, and get a parliament which is an elected minority government of people standing on one manifesto, if we can possibly do it, and that manifesto is a purpose. Push the boundaries of the powers of independence and push it hard, because that's the mistake, the S one of the mistakes the SNP made, in my opinion, in the last four years, was don't rock the boat and softly, softly did not set the case for why we need more powers. So let's show the limitation of the powers by pushing as hard as we can with a manifesto at those powers. Now, really quickly, another thing that we need to do is accept that the way that the case was put together for independence this time around was not optimal. We had a situation where there was not a really, really good shared vision for how we create that independence when we launched the campaign and it came out in drips and drabs as we went through with various commissions and things. That's not good enough. We need to create a proper case, like the Constitutional Convention did. So I suggest we spend the next three years, again, common we will doing a lot of work in this, building a really good case. So I think, for example, if you talked around this movement and you hadn't been so scared of the bankers, I suspect we would have made a case for a Scottish currency from kick-off. And if that case had been put together properly, I think it would be more frustrating. By 2017, we put that full case on the table. Oh, incidentally, I should have said, in my opinion, at the moment, 10 days out, I remind you, I think it's probably likely that we will get the best outcome if we go into 2016 saying we are pro-independence, but we will not call for a referendum the next four years with a plan, which is 2017, we put out that big plan for what independence could be if we get it all right. We used the last three years of that parliament to run what is in effect a low-level independence campaign. We get the coalition back together in 2020. By that point, we have actually created the majority and we stand on a full ticket of early referendum. May election. September referendum and out by Christmas 2020. That is a model that I think we should be looking at. We've been using all the powers of government and the movement to get us there. If we do that, if we build that momentum, I think by the time we come to that vote, we'll already be there. I think the actions of Westminster will take us a long way there, but this is all about us now. This is all about us recognising that what made us strong in this campaign was accepting each other's minor differences. The Greens feel differently about oil than perhaps the Socialists do. The Socialists feel slightly different about banking, the, well, maybe not so slightly, but the, the, the SNP does. The SNP, you need to fix that banking stuff, you need to fix that corporation stuff. Energy, banking was the big mistakes in the policy agenda. So we need to do that, we need to build this up, and I really do think that we can create a coalition that can do these things. And finally, we need to think also about this movement, and this is where Commonweal comes in. We're going to do two things. Well, we're going to do more than two things, but we're certainly going to create a powerful policy unit. It's its own director, its own team, and we're going to work to drive the policy agenda in Scotland as far as we can. The other thing that we are going to do is recognise my biggest learning point of this whole campaign, which is the centre does not control effectively when you have a movement like this. I came from an older school of political strategy where discipline matters, and I've been taught a lesson by you. We need to find a way to structure this um, movement which makes it effective but also diverse and able to do its own thing. Now we're going to do a couple of things in that. One of them is we are going to create space. So we've already got a subcommittee that's looking for a large cafe bar in central Glasgow which we can create as a space for people to come together, meet, talk, organise, get resources and actually work. Now we want, once we've done that, we want to say to people, replicate it. So you lot, you want a space like that in, in um, Dundee, we're going to call it the Common. So create the Common Glasgow, the Common Dundee, the Common Inverness, Hell's Teeth, the Common anywhere, a village, anywhere enough people want to keep it together, we'll help, we'll help make it look good, we'll network it, we'll give resources, make centres and spaces where it's normal for people who want to care about politics to get together. So we're going to do that and finally, 
The other big thing that we're going to work on is creating the infrastructure that changes everything. Common space, we're calling it. This is a powerful, we're already working on this. It's a powerful social media engine. At its heart, it will be like you know, Facebook for this movement. And what we can do is follow who we want. So there'll be groups and organisations in there, whether it's Scottish CND or any of the organisations I've spoken today. Or you can create groups. And anything, and it doesn't just, the point of the strength of this movement is not just a single movement for independence. So perhaps you want to save, I don't know, the, 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 the whales in the, in the bloody river. If you want to do that, get together, shout out who else feels the same. Build a group, work, grow it. You'll have access to our policy unit if, if you need it. You'll have access to our graphic designer, our, our um, writing team, our political lobbies, if that helps. But mainly it's about you creating a self-organised way to sustain, keep organising and build at a national level. And into it, we're going to plug, and this is our contribution, we're going to plug an enormous amount of content. We need to change the media. Now, there's a million media suggestions out there just now that far too many, we need to see how they settle down, but in this we will have a section which is news. We will either point to the best independent news that's created, or if nobody else creates that news, we'll start to raise money to employ journalists and we will write a digital news service. We're going to put on there a policy comment, a, a policy section. You can debate and get involved in networks to influence the policy discussions that we are having through the policy unit. We'll put on there a television channel, well, this was me so enough, um, we'll put on there a television channel, we'll start to produce podcasts of audio and video to challenge the, the, what we're getting from the television. We need to create this infrastructure for everything and all I'm going to say at the end of this is we are itching to do this, <laughs> desperate to do this. Everyone we talk to is desperate to do this. We have no money. We launched a fundraising appeal today. Like everything else in this movement, it's thousands of people giving small regular donations that makes this real. You want a new media, you want a new policy agenda, you want a new way for this movement to organise, connect, work together, you want spaces that we can go to, five pounds a month, 10 pounds a month if you can give it. All of us first to org, go on and, and um, you'll, you'll see, you can click it as a video which will tell you a bit more about this stuff as well. So, to conclude, there are a whole range of things we need to do. We need to work with the parties on the grassroots, we need to change the institutions of Scotland, we need to find ways to physically connect and online connect, we need to build, we need to focus, we need to be realistic and positive. We need to work, and we need to work well. We all want to, we know we can do it. Commonweal is a part of that, and we will do everything that we can with your support to make it reality. Out by Christmas 2020. Well, it's been a hell of a time <laughs> for all of us. Uh, I never thought that I'd ever bring myself to this point. I never thought that I'd be sitting here today talking about politics. That wasn't uh, my intention when I was a wee boy. My intention was to get as far away from this country as possible. And the irony is that I've come back and I am extraordinarily proud to have come back. And I am particularly proud of our city. Our city has been tremendous. We are the Yes City of Scotland. And as the Yes City of Scotland, we have showed a tremendous example. People are looking to us from now on to see what's going to happen. And really, we are, we've got a lot of responsibility. And it's uh, a big responsibility. Because it means keeping the head. It means not keeping your eye off the ball. It means keeping delivering what we need to deliver. But at the same time, we've got to avoid the paranoia, which will naturally spring up. Because the truth is, the truth is that we have truth on our side. We have right on our side. And that's what serves us. And we cannot, cannot get away from the truth. Now that was what's so clear to me when the three amigos arrived uh, with their various uh, shenanigans. Uh, and I realized it's, it's so, it was so obvious, it's so clear. It's, so, it's like as clear as water that we did have the truth on our side and it's still on our side. Now, the future is what is important. There's a movement, and this movement is going to stop. And it's a movement that encompasses not just the SNP, but also Yes for Business, Yes for Academics, Yes for Artists, Independence for Women. They're all part of this group. And this group is what's going to continue to change the face of Scotland. And also, also, more importantly, change the face of Westminster. Because we need to change the face of Westminster. Whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not, we have voted 
not me, not you, not anybody in this room, that the vote has gone to continue the union. But the union will change, and it needs to change. It's rotten to the core. It really is. And the only, the only thing that will save it under the present circumstances is a move to some kind of federation. Because also we owe it to our English brothers and sisters. We owe it to those people in Hull, those people in Leeds, those people in Liverpool, those people in Rotherham, those people in Doncaster, who are fair game for UKIP, people who are so disillusioned with the Labour Party. And there's a kind of, there's another crisis coming which we haven't yet seen, which is going to put working man against working man. And that's what we've got to hold on to. We've got to hold on to avoiding that. And we hold on to avoiding that by keeping the faith and keeping the truth and being clear. No anger, no rage, just telling the truth all the way through. And I believe we can do it. I believe our city can do it. Our city is a beacon. 57%. Glasgow, only 54%. But never mind, you know, they'll learn. <laughs> And uh, that's to me, was incredible. And I just think it's the beginning. I think we're in such a good state now. But we have to be positive. We have to be grateful. We have to be grateful for the S bus. We have to be grateful for everything. Hi for Stobby. We've got to be grateful for all that's going around. And we have to stop things like this incredible hell of a welfare sanction that's being going on. We've really got to nip that in the bud. There are still things to be done, but at the same time, we have to keep our eye on the ball and saying that's where we're going and we're going to get there. There's a general election coming and I want to see every Labour MP turned out of Scotland. Yeah! Every single one.